I welcome all of you to this Divine Mercy Center, especially those who are moved by their faith and their love of Christ, to come here and to find within this place a sanctuary to which your prayers and your petitions are often responded to. It is our faith that allows us to see the gift of God's grace at work in our lives. That is the same faith that we hear in the words of St. Paul to the Corinthians. It's almost as if St. Paul is describing our Blessed Mother, for he says the following, God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. He chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what was low and humble, so that no one would boast in themselves, but only boast in the presence of God. Those words of St. Paul are also echoed in what we know to be Mary's song of praise and thanksgiving as she visited Elizabeth. The very words of Mary praising God's power, God's strength, not in human ways, but in his divine way, recognizing that he chose Mary, this lowly servant, to receive the incarnate word of God. So this is a reminder to us that despite our state in life, whether we're old or young, rich or poor, our faith makes us all equal, and especially the faith of our Blessed Mother, for she is the perfect disciple. She is the one who is always recognized by the Church as being the one who responded most generously to God's invitation of salvation. She allowed her life to be an instrument so that her son, Jesus, would reveal the fullness of God's presence and God's love. And that's what we in our faith are asked to do, to become an instrument, to allow the gift of God's presence to work through us, in our families and in our workplace, to be recognizing that in our own way, <clears throat> even though we might not be powerful and strong or rich or influential, what we have is a treasure that is more powerful and more precious and also more sustaining than what the world can offer us. When we reflect on the, pa the parable of Jesus in that gospel, it's a very interesting parable, for it can be understood at various levels and in various ways. But what I'd like to share with you is the interpretation that I think Jesus intended for his listeners especially his disciples and the Pharisees. For he begins the parable by saying, the kingdom of God can be compared. Then he begins with that story and that narrative. The master summoning his servants and his slaves. How many times does God summon us each day? He chooses us as the master chose those slaves. And we're told that he entrusted to each of them according to their ability. And God does the same. He does not expect anything more than what we have and what he has given us. He trusts that we will use our gifts of wisdom, our gift of faith, and our gifts of love to allow his grace to be multiplied. It's interesting that the three servants receive these different talents. Now, I'm sure all of us, if we were to entrust some of what is precious to us, we would surely make sure that there were certain instructions. And even though the parable doesn't say this, but that the master simply gave the talents, I'm sure that there would have been instruction about how to use those talents and to allow them to bear fruit. Because each of us, in giving something to someone that is very precious, we often tell them 
how to take care of it, how to make sure that it is not discarded. And I believe that the word of the master was received by each of these servants. And it is that word that allowed the industriousness and the fruitfulness of the two servants who received the five talents and made five more because they understood the mind and the instruction and the word of the master. And so they were actually carrying out his will. But it was that third servant who received the same instruction but chose to neglect it out of fear maybe also out of a sense of inadequacy, but he didn't trust the words and the instruction of the master. And so in fear, he simply buried the talent and waited for the master to return. And we know the judgment and the interpretation that the master expresses to the first two servants. He says, well done, good and faithful servant you will be entrusted with more. And that is the message that we need to hear. And I think that the parable can be like the word of God, the word that is given to us, the very incarnate word of Jesus that we hear proclaimed in the scripture. And how this word can be come for us a way for the talents and the gifts of our own human life to be shaped around the very person of Jesus Christ. I think it's very important that the gift of Scripture, the reading of Scripture, the praying of Scripture each day allows for us to open our hearts to hear the instruction, the Word of God, and to allow it to take fruitfulness and root in our lives, and to allow God's grace and that Word to build up not only our own talents, but also those to whom we are called to serve. And when you think about coming to a divine mercy center like this, it is a space that's set aside. It's out in the country. It's windy today. But it's also days when we come here and the word of God is spoken to us maybe in silence and we receive that talent. And the Lord is asking us to work with that talent to allow it to become fruitful in our lives so that others might experience the talent and the gift that God has bestowed upon us, especially the love that God shows to each of us. It might be the love of mercy and forgiveness. It might be the love that instills in us a sense of a greater sense of abandonment to God's will. It might be the word that gives us an encouragement when we are discouraged and wondering what our path in life might be. But God is always faithful. And that is how Mary understood the fact that she was chosen. For God was faithful. And all he asked of her was to respond with that deep sense of trust and faithfulness to say, let your will be done. And so as we hear the word of God when we pray, to echo those words of Mary, to after we've heard the gospel proclaimed, or that we prayed the scripture in silence, maybe in our homes or at work, and at the end of it, to simply say, let your will be done. That the word that I have heard spoken into my heart through prayer or through the celebration of this Eucharist, that this is the talent that the Lord wants us to receive and to allow us to use that word in order that we might see with greater faith, as Mary did, where God's blessings and God's graces are in our lives. We celebrate the great gift of the Eucharist, and we do so first by hearing the word of God proclaimed. It is the word that nourishes us, but it is also the incarnate word that we receive in the Eucharist. And through this gift, this prayer of the church, when we hear the words of the Eucharistic prayer, when we enter into that common response of ourselves to each of the parts of the Mass, the Holy Spirit can instill in us a greater understanding of the incarnate Word that is present here when we gather. 
that the Word of God speaks to us as the Word of God was given to our Blessed Mother. May our faith in receiving the Word of God each day in our lives and in the celebration of the Eucharist, may we respond with the same words of Mary, let your will be done, O Lord.